So let's just rehash this one more time. This is called, what we just spoke about, it's called the intermediate value theorem. That's a lot to write. Uh, AP is totally good with you saying IVT. And let's give one more example. Um, Saquon Barkley <laughs> gets clocked running the 40, is it 40 yard or 40 meter dash? 40 yard dash. How fast do you think he did that? Oh. He ran that in 4.4 seconds. At some, oh. Shoot. So we're going to say 21.1 miles per hour, we're going to say is how fast he was going on this dash. Okay? At some point, yes. Did he go 20 miles an hour on this dash? Yes. Because he had to start how slow? Zero. He had to start at zero. So if he went from zero to 21.1 miles per hour, at some point did he go two miles an hour? Yes. Yeah. That's the intermediate value theorem. Okay? So it says, let's go uh, put this into a drawing. You guys, let's go draw ourselves a little function. And I'm going to go like this. Boop. Maybe I'll even draw a little bit more direct. It doesn't even have to have a curve to it. I don't care. And you might actually have two. We, let's actually draw two of them because I want to note something. I want to put something in terms of symbols and something in terms of numbers. Let's go make up some points. What do we want this point to be, you guys? One comma what? Negative one. What do we want this point up here to be? Three, four? Let's just put some points, okay? You guys, the whole point of this intermediate value theorem is saying, what Y values do we have to cross? What Y values will have to be met? Hit. Zero. Negative one. Zero. Negative, negative one is where it starts. Negative one. Everything in between negative one and four. Yes. 3.9? Yes. Yeah. Negative 0.2? Yes, every y value between negative one and four. Do you guys think that it matters if this graph is continuous or not? What if the graph was not continuous? The intermediate value theorem is not going to apply because we got to know that it's continuous for it to apply. Okay, you guys, that's perfect. Um, let's go ahead and put that. Let's look at what it says. The definition of this intermediate value theorem. We must know that it's continuous. So maybe give that a little circle. Boop. If it's continuous, on a closed interval, closed just means from endpoint to endpoint. Are these circles open or closed? closed? They're closed, right? So that's saying from A to B, in this case, from one to three. How I'd write this interval would be like this. And this is confusing to people because we're used to seeing X comma Y's, right? But this is referring to the X interval from X of one to X of three. You okay with that? It says takes on from, from A to B takes on every value between, as we said, negative one and four. So it says draw a picture and explain this in your own words using a numerical example. Let's do that real fast. So we're going to say, sorry, write a little small. Um, if... The y values at endpoints are, what do we make our y values? Negative one. Negative one and four. Y must, this is a must. Look at that you. Must. Also, equal. Give me some other y values that it would have to be if we went from negative one to four. Zero. Zero. Two. Three. One point one. And I'm going to say, and every number in between. That's what the intermediate value theorem is talking about. If it is 66 degrees right now and the high is going to be 84, at some point it will have to be 70 between then. I just kind of want to put this in symbolic terms too, because AP is all about that. If this point was one negative one, if we want to put this in terms of A and B, this would be A, F of A would be that point. What about this one? This one would have to be B, F of B, exactly. You know F of X is just fancy for Y. So F of B is just saying that Y value at that X coordinate. And that kind of helps with the definition that they gave us. It says, all right, 
uh, the function takes on every value between f of a and f of b. That's just saying from y to y. Okay? All right, you guys. So, on this one, it says, let h be this function. You guys, if it's just h cubed, sorry, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x minus 5, do you think that that'll be a nice and continuous? Just a good old parabola, because we're not dividing by anything. So you agree it's continuous. We got that. Can the intermediate value theorem be applied to guarantee from 1 to 5 that the value of the function will be 0 at some point? We're like, I'm not sure. Let's go see what we start at. Let's go find h of 1. Let's go find how tall Greer was at birth. You know what I'm saying? h of 1. Let's go do that. I'm going to have you do that without a calc first. What's 1 cubed? 1. Minus 2, two is? Negative 1. Negative 1 minus? is negative 5 minus 5? Negative 10. Negative 10. H of 5. We've got to find how tall Greer is now to see if we had hit the number in between. We've got to go find at that end point. You guys, we can do this. I'll be your calculator-ish just to keep things straight. What if I plug in a 5 right here? What's 5 cubed? 125 minus 50 minus 20 minus Oh, golly. Oh, golly. What did I need to change? Five. That, this needs to be a what? 20. Oh, geez. Right. Final answer? 50. So, look at what this asked. Can the intermediate value theorem be applied to guarantee that my h of x would equal zero? Yes. Boom. Listen to what Sophie said. Yeah, zeros between those two numbers. Done. Perfect. We're going to say yes. Guys, leave yourself a little room. This is a really annoying thing to write. I apologize. Leave yourself some room. We're going to say yes, because did my function have to be continuous? Yes. Yeah. We're going to say because h of x is continuous. You can say c-o-n-t if you don't want to write the whole word. Um, and so if you just said, yeah, zero is between those. So how we'd say that is always go least number, middle number, greatest number, then we always put less than signs in between them. Least to greatest, you will have two matching less than signs in between. You're saying zero is between negative 5 and 50. Uh, yes, because h of x is continuous and those are uh, in between each other, we're going to say the intermediate value theorem uh, applies. IVT, baby. Um, we, they had to tell us that the function was continuous. Zero is when my y is equal zero. This interval from 20 to 30 is referring to this x to that x. That's an x interval. You guys, for my y's to be zero, what did my y start at at one interval? Two. To get from two to one, do you have to go through zero? No. Could I have? Yeah. Could I have had like at 21 a negative number? Sure, but I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have to, right? How about I go, go from 1 to negative 3? Yes. Yes. You have to go through 0. So if I were you, I'd put like a little mark like, we're going through 0 there. What about, could it go from negative 3 to negative 2 through 0? No. Nope. Uh, negative 2 to negative 3? Ooh, but from negative 3 to, to 1, would we have to go through? Yes. So he's saying two zeros because my function changes signs between 22 and 24, and you agree from 28 to 30. Yeah. That's it. Guys, that's that intermediate value theorem. You guys, what about this one? It says values of a function are given above. What is enough alone to guarantee on the interval from 4 to 9 that I have to have a y value of 4? Okay, Greer, say what you're thinking. Tell me what you're saying. You just said 2, 5. What are you saying? He's like, hello, to go from 2 to 5, do you agree my y has to be 4? So I agree there's one there. What about here? Oh, it's also 5 and 6. Wow, another one of those. What about to go from 1 to negative 1? Do we have to go to through 4 there? Mm -hmm. Through 4? Mm -hmm. Through 4? Mm -hmm. So it says, all right, what's enough alone to guarantee on that interval we have one y value of 4? Two, you're like, hey, it's got to be continuous between four and five. I agree, because to get there, I agree with two. One and two. What about uh, one? Yeah. If it's continuous between five and six. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I agree with that as well. 
What about three? I'm going to draw you something that you maybe have never seen, actually. Just because K is defined, just because K, that function is defined for every value. Let me show you an example of what this means. The greatest integer function looks like this. Question. Define means that there's every X value. One, two, three, four, there's a Y. So, do you agree F of one exists here? What about F of 1.1? What about F of two? F of 2.9? F of three. So this is defined for all domain. Okay, this goes on forever. So this, this domain is from negative infinity to infinity. Is this continuous? No. 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 So is, am I guaranteed to have a Y value for every single number? No, there's big gaps, right? So defined means nothing. The continuous is the muy importante part. Okay. Good call. So it says, which of the following is enough to guarantee that there's a Y value for it? Option one is saying it is continuous. And you're like, oh, that's necessary. Me? Okay. So you guys, if we've got a tank that's leaking water, um, you guys, we've got this crazy function. Notice the plus 500 at the end. And I'm going to teach you a... <laughs> I'm going to teach you a trick in your calculator. You guys, it says uh, this is the amount of water left in the tank is this W of T. W is measured in gallons. T is measured in minutes from 0 to 60. Can the, interme <coughs> can the intermediate value theorem be applied to guarantee there is a time in the first hour... That the tank has a hundred gallons. No. no. Uh, is there starting at five hundred? Are we? I mean, y e plus five hundred. Well, let's oh, go uh, see. We got lots going on, right? What you just said, we're starting at. So, what do we need to find? W of what first? Starting. So W of zero. Agreed. Zero. After uh, the first hour, what would that be? W of. 60. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. You do not want to go to your y equals and graph this right now. You don't want to do that because look at these numbers. The window is going to be insane. It's not going to be good. So here's what I want everyone to do. This is a little blast from the past. We did a little of this in pre-calc. Zero. I want us to store zero as our x value. So zero, stow, x, enter. Zero, stow is right here. X, enter. Everyone's got a zero stored for x. Yes. How do you do you can't. It doesn't matter on anything. Zero, stow, X, enter. Now I need everybody to go type in that enormous equation on that home screen. So we got 500, that negative out front, 500 over, 1 plus 40, E to the negative 0.1, X, don't forget the plus 500 at the end. You should get 487 points. You have to have three decimals for every AP everything. 805. No, just calc. Then I'm going to do 60, stow, X, enter. I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab that big equation that I already typed. And I'm going to get 45 point, give me three decimals. Beautiful. Cool. So you guys, when we started at the, the beginning of the leak, we had 487.805 gallons in there. An hour later, this is a big leak. We only had 45 oh. gallons left. Is it guaranteed yes. there is a time that we yes. had 100 gallons? Yes. yes. Here's where your explanation, I'm going to have you write. Oh boy. We got to write quite a little bit. Turn me up. What do we have to know? What do we have to know? Continuous. Thank you. Because what was my function? W of T is continuous. You can just say C-O-N-T. And. and what did Soph say before? Zero is between negative 10 and 50. So what would we say here? 45. 45.103. And then. Less than. 100. Less than. And 47 Love it. 487. Yep. I knew what you were saying. We're yeah. staring at the same stuff. There is a time. 
And what we do need to be specific on is on the interval. We need to let them know what interval we were talking about. What was our time interval? Thanks, Star. Between zero and 60. When the what? Tag. Yes? Has. Yeah. Yeah, I just kind of use the words that they use. If you said has, great, doesn't matter. I'm just using what they said. They said contains 100 gallons due to. IBT. Exactly. That's a lot to write. Ugh. Highlights of that statement. Things that they're looking for to get the full points. Continuous. An interval. Noting, noting the time as well as the theorem. Whew, they're looking for all four of those parts. We're skipping the top one. Let's just do this last calculator active. This one says the intermediate value theorem applies on this closed interval. So we already know it's continuous. Guarantees a solution to which of the following equations? So 24 and 28. So he's saying plug in 24 and 28. If I were you, I'd do 24, stow, X, enter. I'm going to go type in 9 plus 2 x e to the negative make sure you're in radians mm -hmm. is that a negative x yes the, i'm sorry that copy did not come out well yeah. did you guys get 10 point something well, I'm not done yet. okay 10.806 good three decimals So the question said, which could be a solution, a guaranteed solution? How'd you get 12? Yeah, 12 lies in between. No, it's just multiple choice. Boom, C. I. You guys, it is 10.05. We've got nine minutes. There are four questions that I put on intermediate value theorem at the end of your packet. I want you to check it with that answer key online. Oodles of time. I'm also going to pass out the review sheet in case you want to get started on it this weekend. You know I've got a nice answer key up on school. Do you guy? Uh, review, we will work on block day. Qu group quiz on Thursday. Individual quiz on Friday.